Hey gang, welcome back to the series on Firebase security roles. Last time I gave you an overview of some of the things you can do. This time we'll get into some of the syntax that helps you match objects in your Cloud Firestore database. Matching documents is the first step in writing a rule to protect data when it's accessed using the Firebase web and mobile SDKs. The first thing to know is that every document in your database has a unique path. You've probably already used these paths in your app in order to read and write documents. This code over here is building a reference to a document with ID Sparky in a collection called Users. In case you didn't know, the name of the Firebase mascot is Sparky. How's it going over there, Sparky? <laughs> anyway, in terms of this document's path, you might think of it like this string. This is pretty straightforward, and you can even use this string directly to build the document reference like this. Now, if you want to control access to this document using security rules, you will need to use this path. Let's take a look at the required boilerplate for Firestore rules. Here, we have the Cloud Firestore service identified at the top level. Nested under that, we have a match clause, which is followed by something that looks like a path. It starts with the component databases, followed by the word database in curly braces, and another component, documents. What this match directive is saying is that the stuff nested inside it is going to be used to match documents anywhere within your database. The database in curly braces there is a wildcard, and it matches your project's database. Currently, there is only one value that it'll match, and that's default in parentheses, as each project can only have one Firestore database. But it's a standard practice to use a wildcard here. Again, this is all boilerplate so far, but I'll nest another match that calls out the path of the document to protect, and the nested allow statement gives everyone read access to it. Now, it's super important to note here that all documents in the database are, by default, denied access by security rules when accessed from a mobile or web client. What security rules let you do is selectively allow access to documents based on the criteria you define. Now, I find it unlikely that anyone would need to write a rule for one particular user's document like this. Typically, what you need to do is write rules that apply to all users in your app, and you typically sign them in using Firebase authentication. To match all users' documents in the user's collection, you'll want to use another wildcard, just like with the database in the line above. The organization for most user-based collections makes use of the Firebase authentication user ID as the ID of the document that belongs to that user. A Firebase authentication user ID is called a UID for short, so I'll name the wildcard as such and put it in curly braces to make it a wildcard match. So now, all documents in the user's collection are readable by everyone, but no one can write anything yet. A useful thing about wildcards is that they become string variables that you can use in the expression that you write to allow access. I'll take advantage of this to indicate who can specifically read and write each document in this collection. So I'll add another line here, which says that the only user that can write the match document is the Firebase auth account with a UID that's the same as the UID wildcard string value. Now, everyone can read everyone else's user document, but only the currently authenticated user can write their own document. I'll say a lot more about how authentication works with security rules in a future video. It's important to note here that these wildcards can only match an entire path segment between the nearest slashes in the path. There are no substring matches, and there are no regular expressions either, but there is a glob type wildcard, which I'll talk about later. And I will say that you can perform additional checks against the wildcard variable string in the allow expressions, including regular expressions. But that's another topic for another video. Now, you might be wondering, what about subcollections organized under a document ID? Well, let's say you're storing references to photos for each user, and you've decided to do that with a subcollection called photos organized under each user's document. You can match those documents in the subcollection by extending the match path and adding another wildcard to match all the documents in each of the user's photos subcollection. I've removed some of the boilerplate here to keep things easier to read. Notice how the user's collection, the user document ID, the photos subcollection, and the photo document ID are all represented in the match path here. Now, let's say we only want people to read and write their own photos for now. So we'll add a line here to allow access on that condition. Notice here that both read and write access are given with a single expression. Now here's one very important thing to keep in mind about matching documents. If the path of the document being accessed doesn't have a full path match with the rule, that rule will not apply. So the entire path of the document, the collection name, the document ID, the subcollection, and so on, all must be represented in the match path. Now let's look at 
all the documents and rules shown so far. The document referenced by docref is only affected by the first match, since it's not using the photos collection. And the document referenced by photoref is only affected by the second rule. As you can see, the photos subcollection is effectively a completely different collection than users, even though it's nested under users. This is not always obvious at first when you're getting started with Cloud Firestore, but the rules here make that more clear. Using subcollections like this to change the permissions of various pieces of data that are associated with the user is a very good practice. You should always model your data in Cloud Firestore with security rules in mind. Think carefully about which users you want to be able to access which content. There's a lot to discuss on this topic, and I'll cover that in future videos. But I'll leave you with one trick for organizing your rules, if you choose to use it. If you recall before, the boilerplate for Firestore security rules has a top-level match for all the documents in your database, and all your document rules get nested underneath it. Sometimes doing your own nesting can save you some space in typing. Since the photos subcollection is effectively nested under documents in the users collection, we can nest the match for photo documents inside the match for users, like this. See how the prefix of users and the wildcard UID are now implied by the outer match. And you can also use the UID variable from the outer match just fine in the inner match. Of course, this nesting is optional, but you might prefer it. Oh, and just one more little thing. I've been using the word variable to refer to the UID and photo ID wildcard strings. Well, that's not really the best word because these variables can't be changed. The values are constant at the time of evaluation when a specific document is being read or written. There are no true variables in security rules. You can only use their values as is. Before we wrap up here, take a look at this rule. I'm sure you might recognize it. It's the rule that your database probably started with when you created your project if you chose the initial test mode for your database. There's an equal star star in the document wildcard here. This is a special kind of wildcard, and this rule is actually matching every single document in your entire database and granting full read and write access to each of them. This rule is okay to get started playing around with Firestore in a new app, but if the rule sounds problematic, that's because it is. It's actually very problematic when it comes time to write effective rules. So when you start writing rules, first get rid of this one, and I'll say more about why in the next episode of this series. So stay tuned right here to the Firebase channel on YouTube, and I'll see you then.